experience in Europe as Central Europe. I was born at the time as the Third Reich, uh, as the Nazis uh, were governing my country in 1941. And in 1945, it happened that uh, Austria was re established. <coughs> I think uh, this is a very important remark because the view of Europe uh, growing up step by step was that there is no Europe. There were two Europes, Western Europe and Eastern Europe, and it was divided, and which was very impressive. I'm born in Vienna, uh, was that. Uh, 60 kilometers eastwards from Vienna and uh, 80 kilometers northwards from Vienna, it was another world. It was for sure the Moscow Park, uh, the communist world, and it was not possible to go. I think we are now celebrating 30 years of the end of the Iron Curtain, and there are very nice pictures of cutting through and so on and so on. Uh, I think it was quite more difficult, and it was a division line. The first part of my remark. <coughs> Second part of my remark, my ancestors uh, on the side of my father and my mother are coming out of the construction business. Uh, and so far, uh, looking back uh, a lot of years, everybody of his ancestors was working everywhere in the old Danish monarchy, the Habsburg monarchy. I think it was not usual, they were not trained to work orders, and I remember they were always telling me a nice story. We built up uh, a house in uh, Moravia. We built up an opera house in Odessa, uh, and so on and so on. And by this, by these uh, stories, which I was told, I was learning that Europe is a little bit bigger than I experienced by the information, uh, by the newspapers, by journalism, uh, and so on and so on. I think uh, that was extremely important for me uh, because it was a different view on Europe. I think it happened that after 10 years of 1945, uh, Austria regained uh, its independence. Before we had four allies uh, in Austria, uh, the country was divided, and I think we can say many thanks to God and whomever that we had not the same fate uh, like the Germans uh, being here divided. That was extremely important uh, for my country uh, because we regained something which you might not really understand, we regain the right understanding of Austria. Because Austria, this title of Austria, was, uh, I think, an expression of a bigger community in Central Europe. Austria was not Austria what it is now. Austria was an expression which was created by the Habsburg uh, with the name Casa Austria, House of Austria. I think it was a May I say a family enterprise of the Habsburgs, uh, owning uh, a lot of uh, places where it is uh, kingdom, duchy, uh, and so on and so on, very much divided and very much different. The difference is still standing. Uh, I think, uh, but the, the community uh, being together is not anymore existing. But I have to say, uh, the downfall of the Iron Curtain uh, created the possibility that we can do it again. And I think this is a great importance of the European Union. That's the reason why for my lifetime and my political life, I was always a fan of European integration. Uh, I think to be a little bit critical also for your understanding, sometimes we are mixing up European Union with Europe. Uh, we are saying, ah, it's Europe. No, European Union is a part of Europe. And still we are missing important parts, uh, the Balkans, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, and so on. And for sure, I think the big problems are not yet settled uh, with our Russian friends. And even if you are looking at the division which uh, the United Nations is doing, the European Organization of the United Nations, UNECE, European, uh, United Nations Economic Commissioner for Europe uh, is including what we are saying Central Asia. A lot of you sitting here. I think it is also Europe. In the understanding of the Europeans, I have my doubts. And it was really accepted, but it is very interesting. Uh, this decision was done looking to the downfall of the Soviet Union. 
Uh, it was a difficulty because the Soviet Union was a part of UNECE, uh, but the United Nations wanted to, to build up a new Asian entity and something like that. That didn't happen. So far, the souls did it this way. Maybe it's a sign for the future. Uh, for the moment, we cannot say what's really going on. I think the crucial day for the questions raised here is for sure 30 years ago. I think the downfall of the curtain was very instrumental. Uh, you, you know my love to our uh, German neighbors. Uh, the Germans managed, uh, I think, uh, to uh, exp explain to everybody that the division of Germany uh, and the downfall, downfall or the opening of the Brandenburg door and so on and so on, that this was creating the changes. I may say the downfall of the Iron Curtain was even more important. And uh, there are some discussions in Germany that they have not right managed uh, the uh, reintegration of Germany. May I say it's even more important that we have not yet managed the integration of Europe here. I think we are focusing a lot of divisions coming out of this history and we have not yet overcome here. Uh, the idea is to speak about the, the cooperation in this context. I think uh, the vision uh, 30 years ago was quite a clear one. Okay, all the countries uh, will come to the European Union. I think that was quite clear, decided, and so on and so on. Uh, I think we were able to do it by the last enlargement, 2004-2007, uh, uh, with the so-called Eastern enlargement, which is not an Eastern enlargement by geography. It is an enlargement to Central Europe. Eastern uh, Europe we are still missing. That's the first very important point we have to say. I think here you can see the difficulties which we have and I will join uh, the assessment of these difficulties uh, a little bit later. Uh, so far, I think what is not yet done is to develop it further on. It is very important for the development of the European Union that by every enlargement after the basic six members was done by to enlarge it and by deepening the European Union. I think to create more in common that did not happen concerning the last Eastern enlargement. We were not able to manage it. It was postponed. We can do it later and let's discuss it and so on and so on. I think uh, in reality it was done uh, that a part of the European Union in this time was not quite sure that this Eastern Enlightenment is the right one. We have still a discussion and I'm running through Europe always to discuss it. And Romania and Bulgaria might have been too early. They were not really mature at this time. Uh, that's one of the discussions. When is somebody mature? I think that's extremely difficult to define it. Uh, if I'm a little bit critical, I'm not sure that Southern Italy is mature, but they are members of the European Union since the beginning. It's certainly is that very mature. Uh, very mature in a certain way. Uh, I think uh, joining question of corruption and so on and so on, they are very mature sometimes. But this is not a criticism of Italy. It is a criticism of the way we are judging the things, because the instrument of the integration uh, is an instrument for develop more Europe. And I think it is a learning process, which is not yet understood. Uh, this imagination, somebody is mature, are very difficult. Because if you are looking, for, uh, for example, to financial and economic questions, I think one of the most difficulties we had in the past were in France and in Germany uh, joining the criteria, because they didn't do it. Okay, who is mature? Uh, that's one of the open questions. Uh, we are not discussing now European integration. So far, I want to stop at this. Uh, there's a lot uh, to, to say. Uh, I think uh, we are speaking about cooperation here. I think uh, after this happening 30 years ago, I think the first move to more integration were quite impressive. Uh, and were done in a very good way. Sitting aside that the vice mayor of Kazakh, I may say, uh, in this time, everybody was uh, prepared in Austria to cooperate with the Eastern neighbors, being very interested to do it. 
the amount of things we are created and so on and so on. But in these 30 years, this mood of preparedness for cooperation was step by step going down. Why? Because I think we had a very primitive view of this development. We had all the feelings to say it in a very primitive way. Okay, they are all democracy now, and if they are working a little bit more, then we have no problems. They are working a little bit more without, uh, without any doubt, but we have problems for sure. Because the difference is out of different reasons. Economic development, social development, cultural development, and so on, are still existing. Connected with the fact that, and I'm confessing this at Austria, that we have not the right knowledge about the Eastern neighbors. I think we are learning now it. With a certain tendency, I think it's so difficult to learn it, let's forget it. We don't want to learn it. They are different, let's keep them out, uh, and so on and so on. That's quite a very strange movement. Uh, and it is happening uh, now, especially concerning judging the whole situation of Europe. That's a background for the so-called neo-nationalism. May I say, it is not a neo-nationalism, it's the old egoism. The old egoism based on the nation-state. And we have no real discussion about the quality of nation-state nowadays. I have my doubts. Is the nation-state still the basis uh, of our cooperation? I think it was a very interesting development uh, during the French Revolution in consequence. But if we are looking at the problems we have together, they cannot be solved by the nation state. By primitive look to the environment, I think where is the nation state? I'm in charge, for example, at the EUSDR, beg your pardon, it's one of the 150 nice abbreviations of the European Union. That means the European Union strategy on the Danube Bridge. It's a cooperation of uh, 14 states along the river Danube and the river Basin. But the difficulty is, can you solve it by the nation state? Can you solve ecological problems by the nation state? No, the wind is blowing. The heat is everywhere. I think uh, all these natural uh, happenings have no knowledge about borders. I think there is no customs office showing here the border for uh, the heat, here the border of uh, wastewater treatment, and so on, and so on, uh, and so on, and so on. I think here we are in a learning phase uh, to deal with the situation which is going quite further on. I don't want to complicate our meeting, but if we are joining globalization, I think here we have it in reality. One of the main problems is, in which way are we dealing with globalization? We are here far off to do it in the right way. Even we have problems to deal with Europeanization, which I think is a large challenge here exists. This neo-nationalism has, has quite a primitive uh, background. It is a sentence which is quite usually used in Vienna. Everybody is thinking on him or herself. Only me, I'm thinking of myself. Uh, that's the current situation. So far, Italia è prima, eh? America first, and so on and so on. You have it in a row. And the parties are even based on this primitive way of uh, looking to the situation. Uh, and I think it is extremely successful. Uh, I think I'm not very happy to say so, but it has some success. If you are looking to the parties, they are going in this direction. And even during the time of European elections, I think you have no way of exchange. We are putting up uh, the lists uh, of those who should be elected on national issues. They are candidates of national parties. Why shall I choose somebody for Europe which is only based in Austria? I think that's for sure the wrong way. We have not even a discussion on this subject. My hope is to the younger generation that it might move more in the direction because I want to go to the other side. We have even a stronger mixture. I think it was very interesting for me uh, as you presented yourself defining, saying uh, uh, Russia uh, from the Soviet Union, but uh, Kazakhstan and so on and so on and so on and so on. 
you can see the difficulties which we have uh, with the situation uh, because we are understanding in a certain way everything is big enough and we are putting up borders where they are not really necessary and they are hindering us to find the right solutions. First direction. I think maybe that's one of the aims you have during this meeting to define how can we overcome these borders. How can we overcome these distinctions? Because for sure, looking to Russia, to my Russian friends, I think if I'm looking to culture, and Europe is very much existing out of culture. That's really, that's interesting case, I may say. The European Union, the European Commission, has no responsibility on cultural issues. But culture is the only one thing which is really connecting Europe. Uh, if you are defining about the important figures, about composers, writers, architects, and so on and so on, they have quite a very different history. I'm always mentioning it here in Hungary. I think one of the key figures of my Hungarian friends is Liszt Ferenc. I think the airport is named after this and a lot of other things. Liszt Ferenc. Liszt Ferenc is born in a village in Austria with the name Franz Liszt. He was uh, written with L-I-S-T, and he wanted to be more Hungarian, so far he added a set uh, to be really Hungarian. His problem was he was never able to speak Hungarian language. He tried to learn it four times, uh, but he failed, which I understand because I know <laughs> Hungarian language is not an easy one. It happens to Hungarians who are born in Hungary. Okay, you have a problem. The problem is to understand Hungary. But the, the, the crazy situation is, where is he buried? Uh, with Richard Wagner in Bayreuth. Uh, the famous Hungarian composer. But he is a Hungarian po composer if you're listening to his music. And here you can really smell Hungary uh, in Iran. Uh, this is one example. I can give you endless examples in this direction. But we have to learn out of culture what is in common here in Europe. And that's one of the cross-border initiatives which are happening. It's not backed by politics. The weakest uh, responsibility within the European Commission is culture. Uh, if you are looking at the budget, and budget is sometimes the message how important something is, it is the smallest budget for sure. And uh, the responsibility of the Commission on Culture is nearly nothing. Uh, he's a nice guy, and if uh, nobody of the Commission wants to go elsewhere, the Commissioner for Culture will be sent. That's one of the realities. I think we have to change this in this direction. General remark, I'm keeping off of this. There were a lot of exercises happening after the downfall of the Iron Curtain. Uh, I think they are nearly endless. Uh, I only want to mention some and to describe what that happened to One of the first Long time before the Iron Curtain fell down, it was a Central European Initiative. I think it was done by the Austrians, by Czechoslovakia, by Hungary, and by the Italians. I think then it was enlarged by Yugoslavia, it was a group called Pentachi, uh, five countries, and nowadays they are uh, pentagonal, they are nowadays they are 28. Uh, it is based in Trieste. And may I say, it is not a very successful exercise. Uh, the very important thing, if that's a reason why I'm positive, Belarusia is a member there. It's the only one entity where the Belarusians are really in. And that's extremely important, because at this level, I think you, you can have context, because Belarusia is also Europe here. And I think we have to learn it. Nobody is really looking at the Russia, what's uh, going on here. Uh, if you go to Russia and to the center of Minsk, the capital, I think they are trying to describe their history. In the center, there's a hill. On this hill, there is a, 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 a rathaus standing, a rada, uh, for sure, in a Polish style. And the side, you have a uh, Jesuit Church, the Benedict Church, and the Franciscan Church. I think there are not too many Catholics in Belarus. They are trying to rewrite the history because this country was extremely divided all these in different directions and so on and so on. That's one of the main things which are really happening. 
We have another example that this direction which is sometimes a little bit crazy. This is northern Macedonia with Skopje. They are trying to describe in the center of Skopje their history uh, with a collection of monuments. It's really a crazy exercise, but I understand them because how is to describe the identity of northern Macedonia? What are they? Bulgarians? Everybody is against. So the only language is a Bulgarian dialect. It's always said by scientists. I think uh, I'm not uh, experienced enough to say. Uh, the Serbs are still convinced that it's a part of Serbia. Uh, my dear Greek friends are saying you are not allowed to, to name your country in Macedonia because this is Greek uh, and so on and so on. And uh, I was always very interested to, to have a drop of the blood of uh, Alexander the Great uh, to make an analysis in DNA from where he was really. Because at this time it was always a mixture by, by everybody existing. This here you can see by this example uh, what the difficulty here is. Central European Initiative for the exercise with nearly no results. It's very nice, the meetings, everybody is happening. They have always a very good meal in the evening, okay, I was also a part of this, but uh, not really something you see here existing. There's a long list of such entities. For example, I was one of the co-founders of the already named European Union Strategy of the Daniel Bridge uh, here, because uh, this uh, river is connecting uh, 10 countries, uh, together with the basin, it's 14 countries, for sure. But may I tell you, the difficulties to create the cooperation on the River Danube is extremely. Because my dear Hungarian friends, fairly big pardon, to give the example, the Hungarian government is always saying, as long as all the rivers are coming to the Danube, are not again a part of the Kingdom of Hungary. They are looking back to the macro map of Kingdom of Hungary, the Kingdom of Hungary for three times, uh, the current Hungary, we cannot cooperate on this until the problem is not yet solved. Uh, is another example showing in a certain direction. And then we have uh, another example which is also happening in Central of the European. This is Visegrad. The Visegrad cooperation are only four countries. Uh, it is uh, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, Hungary and Poland. But uh, those who are from Poland know that the Poles are not very much convinced. Uh, they are more looking in another direction. So far, the Weimar tri Triangle, the cooperation of Poland, Germany, and France. Why? Poland is the biggest country out of the Visegrad countries, and they are saying we have more importance than these tiny neighbors we have here. Uh, it's sometimes used, I think, to criticize the European Union or the Germans, and so on and so on. Uh, but I think there's no real cooperation happening. I can continue endless, and I will stop there because we are coming to an end of the time. There is quite more cooperation existing, as I can describe, on different fields. I was Minister for Science for six years. I was able to create a lot of cooperations on science, which are working quite well. I think sometimes I'm really convinced Cooperation shall be done without politics because on the other fields of the life it is quite easier to create because uh, people are understanding we have to cooperate otherwise we will have no uh, results. That's extremely good. You know, they are always difficult with the Hungarians. I met the Landeshauptmann, the government of the Dürkman, which is a part, uh, which is quite close to here. Uh, it was a part of Hungary, it has to be mentioned uh, here. I was asking him, dear governor, how is uh, the cooperation with Hungary? It must be extremely difficult. He said, no. Uh, in the uh, first border areas, we have a close cooperation of neighbors, which is quite natural. So you can see one of the problems. Politics is living out of making difficulties, not of uh, creating solutions. I think that's one of the main situations we have in the current situation. Everybody is creating difficulties. To give the impression that we are doing something to solve the problems for the future, uh, they are creating some cooperation entities which are not really working. They are only making difficulties visible 
uh, here in the cemetery. We have to do it out of uh, special fields concerning security, criminality, and so on and so on, but for sure it can be done quite more. It is extremely important that we are creating more mood for the necessity uh, of cooperation. And I may tell you, and I'm always mentioning this, a quite more primitive argument. If we Europeans are not cooperating, then Europe will be lost. I think in the moment, we are 7% of the global population, not more. The only perspective we have in the next 20 years, we will go down to 4%. Uh, I think we are still 22% of the economic capacity uh, in the world, okay, but it will be, go down because China is coming up, India is coming up, they are coming up, and let's be happy because otherwise Europe will be ruined by migration. Everybody is trying to come to a better path. Europe is obviously one of the better parts. Uh, <clears throat> so far, I think uh, there are some fears created also. Uh, I met a uh, representative saying, ah, Europe will be soon uh, a Muslim continent and then it will be a part of uh, the Muslim parts uh, of Asia and so on and so on. You can see what's here going around. I think so far we have to do something uh, for Europe and we have to discuss it but not in a hostility to, towards our neighbor. We have to use uh, the relations, the corporations, uh, which are really here existing. That's very challenging. May I say not anymore for me, because I'm in an age where you can see some end coming. But it is very important for you, because you are looking for the future. And therefore, you have to do this cross-border cooperation. Maybe to create uh, not only political entities, but practical, down to earth, is extremely necessary, then you have any chance uh, here possible. I will end on this, and let's discuss how the things can go on. Thank you very much.